there's a reason why I tapped you three times on the head. And it does have to do with Black Myth Wukong. Let me explain. During the Game Awards, Game Science revealed another trailer for Black Myth Wukong. I have a lot of thoughts and we might be here a while, so grab a cup of boba milk tea and let's get comfy. As a quick summary for anyone unfamiliar, Black Myth Wukong is described as an action RPG rooted in Chinese mythology and based on Journey to the West, which is one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. In this game, players will set out as the destined one to venture into a myriad of marvels and challenges to uncover the obscure truth beneath the veil of a glorious legend from the past. If you haven't seen my first two videos about the game, I'll link them in the description box below. Highly recommend you watch those because I give a lot of context and backstory and theories about the game. We also now have a confirmed release date. Black Myth Wukong is coming out on August 20th, 2024 for console and PC. Some medicines have already pointed out that August 20th is said to be the birthday of the Monkey King, so clearly this was an intentional choice. I wonder if it's alluding to the rebirth of another destined monkey, us as the player character. Maybe the legend of the Monkey King wasn't about one monkey, but many monkeys who went through the cycle of reincarnation. I'm also going to be going off of the Chinese version of the trailer in this analysis. The English version isn't bad at all, but as we all know, certain things may get lost in translation or things have to be omitted for clarity and length, especially with Chinese being such a complex language, so we're going to stick with the original. I'm also going to point out some things that stood out to me in the video and give some of my observations. In this newest trailer, we see Lan Cai, a blue-skinned humanoid dragon-looking figure with horns, painting a mural on a stone wall while reciting a poem. This poem is actually a song called Hao Liao Ge, which literally translates to the good song, and it's featured in the first chapter of Hong Lo Meng, also known as the dream of the Red Chamber, which, like Journey to the West, is another one of the four great classical novels of China. The context for this is, in the Dream of the Red Chamber, one of the characters suffers a ton of misfortune all at the same time. His house burns down, his daughter gets kidnapped, and he has to live at the mercy of his relatives. This character then encounters a Taoist on the street who sings this song that the blue-horned humanoid is reciting. My rough translation is as follows. Mortals all know that being a god is good, yet cannot forget fame and rank. Where are the generals of history and today, covered by grass in barren graves? There are more stanzas after this in the full song, but the overall message as I interpret it is we all know what is good, but there is always something earthly that has a grip on us that we can't let go and it holds us back from goodness, or in the context of Journey to the West, enlightenment. And in the end, everything you hold above goodness is futile in death. When you're in the grave, what can fame, rank, money do for you? In order to achieve enlightenment or godhood, you have to let all of these things go. So when Lan Tsai turns around and asks us, you also want to become a god? It seems to me the implication is, are you willing to give up all of these earthly things to become a god? Further on in the trailer, we hear a young child's voice ask his master, Lan Tsai, are there more good people in the world or evil? The master responds, there are more good people. The disciple asks, then why isn't the world peaceful? Why does evil run rampant? The master explains, because good that doesn't distinguish between good and evil isn't good at all, but evil's ally. Using the might of thunder yet the kindness of a bodhisattva, this is your destiny. I feel like this is pretty significant because in Journey to the West, Wukong was very much a kill first, ask questions later kind of character, as opposed to Tang San San the monk, who was arguably too kind and trusting and benevolent with evil beings. So I take this to meet our masters imparting some wisdom upon us, where we need a balance of both might and kindness to truly battle evil. I also thought this exchange with this teacher-disciple dynamic was interesting for a couple more reasons. Those of you who are familiar with Journey to the West may know that Tang San Sang, the monk who had to retrieve scriptures from the West, was Sun Wukong's master, but he was not Wukong's first master. His first master was Xu Pu Ti Zu Shi. I'm going to call him the patriarch for the purposes of this video. And it was he who taught Wukong how to achieve immortality. We can see that Lan Cai is painting a mural in the video, and at the end of the trailer, we can see the image in full depicting a monkey kneeling in front of what appears to be an enlightened being. I'm deducing this based on the glow and the halo around his head, which is used to visually signify Buddhas and other enlightened beings in traditional Chinese artwork. This 
painting is very similar to this image that was published on wooden blocks in the 1592 version of Journey to the West, which shows Wukong meeting the patriarch for the first time and becoming his disciple. The difference between the two images is the patriarch appears to be holding a stick in the Black Myth trailer, which suggests it's depicting a different scene. In the Journey to the West novel, the patriarch was delivering a sermon one day and then Wukong stated his unwavering pursuit of immortality. The patriarch hit the monkey's head three times, leaving everybody else confused. The taps on the forehead was actually a riddle, and Wukong heard his teacher loud and clear. He sought out his master at the third watch, and it was then that the patriarch revealed the secrets of immortality. Wukong learning these secrets and attaining immortality is one of the catalysts for what happens in the rest of the novel. As some of you may know, a lot of Chinese mythology and Chinese fantasy revolves around the concept of cultivation in pursuit of immortality. Essentially, every living being can cultivate cultivate their spiritual essence and build up their spiritual powers to achieve immortality or godhood. And you can do this in a bunch of different ways, but it usually involves something like joining a sect in the mountains, practicing martial arts, and going through difficult trials. Some choose to meditate for 50 years in a cave just like this. And more often than not, a spiritual cultivator usually has a master who is essentially their teacher and mentor who is there to guide them, train them, and keep them on the correct path. In Journey to the West, the patriarch was Wukong's first master, and it was he who taught Wukong a lot of his iconic skills. These include his cloud somersault skill, which allows him to travel 108,000 li in a single jump, as well as his infamous 72 shape-shifting transformations. And the reason why he taught Wukong the 72 transformations is so he could hide from the Sanzai, which are three calamities consisting of lightning, fire, and wind that are sent by heaven every 500 years to punish cultivators for defying their fate. The fate, or destiny, of all living things is death. It is the natural cycle of life, birth, and rebirth. So seeking immortality and thereby rebelling against the natural order of things, this was seen as defying the heavens. Now we don't know exactly in clear, certain terms what we're trying to accomplish as the player character in Black Myth, but we know our player character is the destined one. So assuming Lanzai's disciple here is us, I think the destiny he's referring to is actually two things. First, on the surface level, whether we want to achieve immortality, specifically whether we want to be a shenxian or a god. Second, the implication, if we're going to fix everything the original Monkey King couldn't. Because here's the other thing. At the end of Journey to the West, the Monkey King achieves enlightenment and becomes a Buddha. All of the other main characters in the protagonist group get happy endings as well, but the world more or less remains the same. It still has pain and suffering and sickness and grief and evil, all the things that make being good hard. So yes, the Monkey King achieved what he set out to do in Journey to the West, he accompanied his master to retrieve religious texts, but he had to face a ton of enemies along the way. There's gotta be some fallout from all of that, which we as the player character are probably going to have to address. To take it a step further, I also don't think the point of the game is Wukong. Like yes, his name is in the game title, but the devs have indicated before that there are plenty of intriguing characters in Journey to the West that they want to explore. They specifically state that these characters are called villains just because they go against our heroes. But who are they really? The website says, We applaud when Wukong defeats those so-called villains. But who are they indeed? Why do they go against our heroes? We are curious about their fear and love, goodwill and hatred, obsessiveness and daily life. Journey to the West was very much focused on the traveling band of Sun Wukong Tang Sanzang, Zhu Bajie, and Sha Wu Jing is clearly positioned as they are the heroes and the protagonists, and all of the Yao or monsters they fight are the villains. However, villains can have their own stories too, and when you're able to dive deeper into their motivations and their past, it stands to reason things may not be so black and white. I love villain origin stories. Even in this trailer, the large bulk of the video is essentially a fast highlights reel of what I assume to be bosses and enemies we'll encounter in the game. Throughout the montage, we hear a bunch of y'all mocking and questioning.
questioning destiny. Destiny, destiny, be obedient and listen to heaven's command. A few oldies who won't die. Is it the destiny of my kind to be exterminated? What destiny? It's all greed. Wait until I peel off your face, then I'll go play as a destined one. What if I become a god? Isn't it still the same? Fighting and killing an ugly behavior? So all of these enemies are spitting in the face of destiny. And who can blame them, really? I mentioned this in my previous video about Black Myth. There's a really big theme around duality and going against destiny. And it fits along what we've seen in previous trailers. Servants rebelling against their masters, going against Buddhist teachings, and pursuing their own desires. In Buddhism and a lot of Chinese fantasies, you have to break out of the cycle of rebirth in order to achieve enlightenment. But if you are always destined to be the villain, how can you ever break out of this cycle? Are you just doomed to have a bad ending forever? So I don't think our role is to kill all of them. Some of them maybe, but perhaps with others, we're supposed to use our pusashing, the heart of the bodhisattva, to lead them on the right path to goodness. I was also hoping to see a lot more recognizable characters from the Journey to the West novel because they're so iconic and to have them come to life in a game built on Unreal Engine 5 would have been so cool. But a lot of the creatures in the trailer I don't recognize. This could be a combination of the scenes going by really fast and not everybody's appearance is described in detail in the original novel. Game science could have taken artistic liberties as well, especially if Black Myth Wukong takes place after the events of the book. Time has clearly passed. This was heavily suggested in the spider cutscene video, so it makes sense that there are new faces. The ones that I'm particularly excited about include this giant turtle here. I'm wondering if this is actually Da Bai Gui or the Great White Turtle from the novel, who was forced out of his home by the King of Spiritual Touch, who was originally the Bodhisattva Guan Ying's pet goldfish, who cultivated his powers by listening to the sutras she would recite. I know it sounds crazy, Chinese mythology is wild. Wukong managed to subdue the goldfish and in return the great white turtle offered to ferry the group on his back across the river. The turtle also requested that the monk help him ask the Buddha about when he would be able to attain human form. Tang Sanzang promises to do this but he actually forgets. So when the band meets the turtle again, the turtle naturally follows up with the monk who apologizes for forgetting but the turtle is understandably still upset and tosses them off his back. This is also the last of the 81 tribulations the monk was destined to face on his journey to obtain the scriptures, so maybe in Black Myth we'll get the opportunity to finally get the turtle its answer. I'm also especially excited for this encounter. This is one of the Si Da Tian Wang, aka the four great heavenly kings who each rule over one of the cardinal directions and are the protectors of Dharma, which are cosmic laws that govern the universe. The items that they hold each symbolizes a different teaching, and these teachings explain how to have a good life. In Journey to the West, Wukong actually defeated all of them, so maybe they've since gotten stronger and we have to defeat them again? One of the co-founders of Game Science posted on ArtStation four years ago showing off some concept art and wrote that they had 160 monsters in their new project, which we now know to be Black Myth. There are a lot of characters in Journey to the West, so 160 doesn't seem that surprising to me. And this was also posted years ago, so that number could very well have changed. But even in this latest trailer, there was like 20-something characters. So one of the questions a lot of players have is how long is the game going to be? In 2020, Game Science stated in an interview that they plan to create over 15 hours of game content. And this, of course, I'm assuming is if you kill all of the bosses without dying your first time. I do like how the devs seem to be emphasizing scale with this game. A lot of these characters are massive, like with the Si Da Tian Wang. I personally love a mega zoomed out view. A huge pet peeve of mine is being in a fight with a big character model and the camera's just like marginally bigger than the bare minimum and you have to finagle your camera angle so you can still see and aim without being blocked by a big butt. Aside from the bosses, from what we've seen so far, they've done a great job of incorporating scale into the environment as well. I'd actually like to take a moment to appreciate the landscapes and scenery in the game. If any of you have been to China, like outside of the cities, it's a very different type of geography and natural beauty that you just don't find in the West. 
For example, Zhangjiajie National Forest Park is one of the most popular examples of this. Director James Cameron uses this inspiration for his film Avatar. It just appeared so otherworldly and was fitting for an alien race because it's simply not what a Western audience was used to seeing. We also currently know of four large scale levels in Black Myth. These include Thunder Temple, which is like the tundra with snow and wind, the desert biome, Black Wind Mountain, which has forests, plus Purple Cloud Mountain. There were apparently some leaks that indicated there are additional levels beyond these, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are, but it's not just nature, it's the buildings and statues as well. Game Science reportedly scanned temples in China and used them to create a library of architectural materials in UE5. For example, we see a pagoda on fire in this trailer. This is Liu Shengta, which is a pagoda in Fujian, China. It's a real place. So all of this should add to the authenticity of the game and really help to immerse players in the world of Black Myth. One area where the devs don't seem to be going beyond or capturing the scale is where the Monkey King 72 transformations are concerned. Note that 72 isn't literally 72, it basically means a lot and or infinite transformations. The current transformations that players know of include the Cicada, which allows the player to stealth, a white ape, which is quite large in size, so I assume maybe something to do with added strength, a wolf capable of of setting enemies ablaze, the bat, which allows for long flights, a mouse holding a wand, which lets you clone yourself, and a stone with two legs, which ups your defense. There could be more upon release, and selfishly, I think more content is great, but I completely understand that implementing a lot of different transformations could be excessive from a development standpoint and overwhelming for players to keep track of. All in all, I am cautiously optimistic about this game. I like that it's not a retelling or adaptation of the original Journey to the West novel, but is instead inspired by the world and the characters, particularly the villains. Those of you who are familiar with my content know that story is the most important part to me in video games, followed by romance, and I think the story is going to take us on a philosophical journey. I get the feeling that the game is asking us to consider, is destiny something we have to go along with, or do we actually have the power and the agency to choose? If villains are destined to be villains, are they actually bad if they had no choice? How can they ever break out of that cycle. I'm also still inclined to think that there seems to be some loose ends and fallout from Wukong's actions in Journey to the West that we as the player character have to fix. We see in this trailer the concept of destiny doesn't sit right with all of these characters. They're actively rebelling. Perhaps our role as the player character is to help right some wrongs and lead them on a better path. Let me know what you think in the comments, and as always, please do give this video a like if you enjoyed it or learned something new. It really does help my channel as a small creator to reach a wider audience, and I would be immensely grateful if you also subscribed for more videos like this. Till the next one!